What is up, everyone? Today, we're going to learn how to make a redrum edit. And today's video is actually sponsored. Yes, I already got a sponsorship. Does this mean I'm like famous now? Today's video is actually sponsored by Heavy Hits Pool. In my opinion, the best record pool out there. And that is actually, I'm not getting paid to say this at all. Like I'm being dead ass. It's in my opinion, the best one out there. In terms of things that Heavy Hits actually provides, um, its website is second to none. Like the search features are undefeated. I don't think there's a single other website that has come up with as quickly as they have the detailed search features that they have. You can literally search for anything you want. You can search by mood, you can search by key, you could search whether you want acapellas, instrumentals only, you could find DJ tools. If you type them on there, you can find scratch tools. You can find, if you're a DJ or even a producer, anything you may want or need is already on heavy hits for you to go get. And I think the normal price for the pool is like 30, like 25 to 30 bucks a month. But if you use my code, DJ and one, again, that is DJ and one, lowercase, all lowercase, so DJ, a-N-D-O-N-E, no spaces. Your first month will be, and I repeat, only $5. That's literally like four McChickens with tax. Four McChickens, endless music. So with that being said, you should definitely go check out the site. It's fantastic. I've been using it for over two years now, and I haven't used a single other record pool since then. All right, so we are in the DAW now, and I will just play a little snippet of this so you guys can hear what we're working with. Hey, now get your boots, hang your coat for this wet ass pussy. He bought a phone just for pictures of this wet ass pussy. Pay my tuition just to kiss me on this wet ass pussy. Now make it rain if you want to see some wet ass pussy. All right, so in today's edit, there's only three things I really used a lot, which was compressors, auto panning, and EQ. So let's start with the drum section here. So all together, the drums sound like this. So as you can hear, I didn't add any kicks, 808s, bass lines, anything like that, because there's already a bunch of low end going on in the song. And when I heard it for the first time, I didn't really think there was a lot of top end going on. I really didn't hear a lot of like hi-hats, crashes, things like that. And I thought I was kind of missing that. So this edit is pretty much just all adding a top line, increasing the tempo just a little bit, and then having things go in like a very consistent shaker-like pattern just to give it more of a like driving feel. So on this edit, I just have a snare. Then I have my hats here. And what I did was I EQ'd it, but then I added a auto pan as well. So if you go into your audio effects section and drop an auto pan in, you get something like this that comes up. I actually dropped in a preset slow and steady, but I ended up adjusting it a bunch. So when you drop the auto pan in, you want to change it to the music note feature. And then you'll be able to adjust from here. I found this is the easiest to work with when you're like just starting out too. So the amount is how severe the auto pan is gonna be, like how much right and left it's gonna go. And then the rate is how fast it's gonna be panning. So if I set it at 25% with a rate of one, it's gonna be panning slightly to the left and right every bar. So every, not every count, but every bar is that's when it's gonna start to pan. So if you have it at 164th, it's just gonna be bouncing back and forth like really fast. But if you have it at eight, it's gonna be a really slow pan left to right. And then I did the same thing on my, <laughs> on my bed squeak sound, which I basically is my makeshift uh, shaker. <laughs> the eater sound. So I pretty much duplicated the pan, but then what I did was I clicked this invert button here on the bottom section. And what that does is it just does the panning in reverse. So you'll see on the screen here, if I click it, the lines, the orange and blue lines start to change. That's because it changes where your panning starts. So what it's doing is the hats and the bed squeak are then panning right and left at opposite times. So when the bed squeaks in the left side of your ear, the hats are going on on the right side of your ear. So it has this cool sort of back and forth effect. And then I didn't really do anything to the rim snare here, just some basic EQ. And then up here, 
it, I made a group, and that's where I did a majority of the processing for the drums. And if you want to make a group, you just select the tracks that you want to make a group of, and you can hit Shift, or you can just hit Command and select multiple ones. And then you can either right-click Group Tracks or hit Command-G, and then it'll group the tracks into one big like group for you to... If you hit Command G, then it'll put it in one group for you to process all the tracks. Now this rack is based off of a video I saw from Noise London. Um, he's actually a mixing and mastering engineer. He has a lot of great videos that I watch uh, for everything mixing and mastering. So I will actually link it in the description below. He gives a way better explanation of all of this stuff than I do, but I'll just explain it the best I can. But I definitely recommend you go check that video out. So on the start of this group, I have a glue compressor. The point of this was to kind of just gel everything together, let the hats come up a little bit more, as well as the shaker and have it be like a, not a unified sound, but have less dynamic range. And then I put a utility there and dropped the gain down a little bit just so I wouldn't be redlining or clipping any of the effects as I like drove it further. And then I added a drum bus here just to give it a little more crunch. Not actually crunch because this is what the crunch knob does, but you, you get what I'm saying. With the drum bus, when you drop in a drum bus effect, you'll get something like this that comes up. I usually start with a preset. So one that I really liked a lot was a drum sharpener. And then what I did was I just adjusted the transients. I just cut that down a little bit and then played with the drive. And then I set my output to zero dB. Once I had all of that the way I wanted it, I then dropped the dry wet knob all the way down to 0% and then started to bring it up until it was at the area where I wanted it to be at. So I'll just A-B this so you guys can hear the difference. So it's a pretty big difference. You can actually really <laughs> hear that uh, the drums are coming through a little bit more and that it is a little bit more cohesive and there's less dynamic range there. And then lastly, what I did to the drums was I added some parallel compression. So how I did that was I added a return track. So if you right click on where all of your audio tracks are, there's a section that says insert return track right here. If you click that, it'll add a return track. And if you can't see it, just hit this R button on the right side of your screen. Then all of your return tracks will pop up. And this is where I made a send for my parallel compressor. So the parallel compressor is essentially just crunching like the life, like the living shit out of, out of these drums. It sounds awful <laughs> when you're like feeding it in there and you're just hearing it soloed. But what I'm doing is I'm only adding a little bit of the very compressed signal back into the original signal of the drums just to give it more texture and width to the sound. So you can see here on the return, I only added negative 25. And I actually made a preset called Parallel Compressor <laughs> that I just dropped into the return track. And then what you do is you just drop the threshold all the way down, put the out all the way up to the maximum amount. So solo, the Parallel Compressor sounds like this with the drums. So objectively, that sounds like dog shit. But when you add just a little bit of it into the drums, it actually gives it a cool effect. So I'll start feeding this parallel compressor into the drum groove. And I'll turn it all the way up so you guys can hear like the full extent of it. So you can hear just, if you put it all the way up, it's way too crunchy and it just sounds over compressed and bad. But if you just add about half of that signal or a little bit less than that even, it does add this nice level of texture and width that is typically missing. And the last thing I did was some sidechain compression. So what the f is sidechain compression? <laughs> the best way to explain it in the most simple way possible is that you are just ducking the volume of a bunch of other sounds so that one sound can come through. And the sound that I really wanted to come through was the snare because a kick and a snare is typically the strongest elements in a song. So I wanted that snare to really come through and cut through the mix. So I have two side chain groups here. I have on all of the more like percussion elements like the hats, the sound, 
and the rim snare, and then I sidechained uh, both of the WAP tracks. When you're dropping in a sidechain for the first time, and you just drop a compressor in, that's the uh, effect you're gonna wanna use if you wanna sidechain. If you hit this arrow on the top section, this is what's gonna have the sidechain menu pop up. And if you just select sidechain, you then select the audio that you want to sidechain to. So in this case, you want to sidechain to the snare because that's the element that we want to cut through. And then just matching it with my eight compressor here, I have the ratio all the way up, the attack all the way down, so it's immediately taking effect. And then you just play with the release. 50 is usually a sweet spot, to be honest. Uh, 100 can be a little bit of a stretch, but anywhere between zero to 100 is usually where I see the release knob. And then the threshold, you just adjust to taste. And you can see here on the left, I actually have a Live 8 compressor instead of the Ableton 10 compressor. Sometimes there's some pops and clicks within the Ableton 10 compressor. So if you're using Ableton, I recommend getting the Live 8 compressor and then using that for all of your side chaining. With the side chain off, you can barely hear the snare and it's having a very difficult time coming through and being present. But as soon as that side chain is taking effect, that snare is cutting through. Nigga, catch a charge, extra large and extra hard. Put this pussy right in your face. Swipe your nose like a credit card. Hop on top, I wanna ride. I do a kegel, what is inside? Spit in my mouth, look at my eyes. This pussy is wet, come take a dive. Time me up, nigga, catch a charge. Extra large and extra hard. Put this pussy right in your face. Swipe your nose like a credit card. So you can hear it. When I have it off, you, you can barely hear that snare and it just sounds really muddy and just kind of sitting in the background. But as soon as I activate that side chain compressor, that's what helps that element cut through. And then if you follow all these steps, you should have a redrum edit like this. I'm a freak bitch, handcuffs, leash shit. Switch my wig, make him feel like he cheat tan. Put him on his knees, give him something to believe in. Never lost a fight, but I'm looking for a beat. In the food chain, I'm the one that eats you. If he ate my ass, he's a bottom feeder. Big D stand for big demeanor. I can make you bust before I ever meet you. If it don't hang, then he can't bang. You can't hurt my feelings, but I like pain. If he fuck me and ask who's is it when I ride the dick, I'ma spell my name. Ah. Absolute. Zinger. Alrighty, ladies and gents, that wraps it up for today's video. Hopefully you learned something new. As always, if you did learn something, make sure to like and subscribe, all of that good stuff. And a big shout out to Heavy Hits for sponsoring today's video. They've been riding with me for about two years now, so I really appreciate it. In the next week's episode, I'll show you guys how to make sampled by edits. So we'll be taking songs from back in like the 70s or 60s when Jesus was still alive, and I'll show you how to transition those songs into the current song that actually samples them. Until then, take it easy, tell someone you love them, all of that good stuff. Peace out.